All right, guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant, and this is Star Citizen. So, another year, and CitizenCon has been and gone. The fifth annual convention for Star Citizen. It's been two years since the epic Sandworm event, and four years since the landing on our corp. So, what does CIG have in store this year? Well, that would be vast cityscapes, stunning vistas, vehicles, and of course, ships. Oh, and more ships. The main demonstration of upcoming Star Citizen content came during the convention's keynote, hosted as always by Chris Roberts. The livestream this year took a slightly different approach as CIG opted to make things more professional, their words not mine, and hired a special service provider to organise everything for the livestream for them. The plan was to, uh, to stream from their own website rather than Twitch, unfortunately this resulted in some very bad audio desync technical issues. And so CIG very quickly returned to Twitch. For the demo, they showed Planet Hurston and began in the sprawling city of Lawville, a very impressive looking environment spanning a 24 km diameter that, conversely, felt a little more than underpopulated. However, if my understanding is correct, it will eventually look a little bit more lively in future iterations. Life in the city is intended to be extremely detailed. And indeed, that sort of depth has always been the ultimate aim for Star Citizen. This was aptly demonstrated by ordering a drink at a bar, which in turn displayed the liquid and ice cube physics. The living city was also further demonstrated by a fully working train service and a currently not fully implemented customs checkpoint. The train runs the schedules and carries players from location to location around the city, the customs, once fully functional, will act as checkpoints to prevent players from moving illegal goods around the city, and this in turn will eventually open up fully-fledged smuggling gameplay. At this point, it's probably worth talking about the object container streaming system and bind culling. Up until this point, every time you load Star Citizen, it has also loaded more or less every object in the galaxy, and that was obviously a lot of objects, and so it hit performance very heavily. Object container streaming changes this by only loading the objects that are relevant to the player, and it gets a lot more complex, but by all accounts this was a very difficult system to implement and involved 18 months reworking and re-engineering much of the game's engine. However, it's now complete and a part of the current update, I believe it's in patch 3.3 which has just hit the test servers, do correct me if I'm wrong on that though. Now, object container streaming and bind culling brings with it some massive performance gains, and this is something I will be looking at in a future video. Missions are of course a big part of Star Citizen, and these can be collected from your Moby Glass, which is an augmented reality type display that you carry around on your wrist. The Moby Glass acts as a central hub for many aspects of the game, including mission tracking and communications. However, missions can also be collected from NPCs dotted around. In the demo, CIG showed the player picking up a mission from the Reclamation and Disposal Department. The objective was to collect a prototype hardware blade. Now, here's a thing that will make Star Citizen very, very special, and will likely in equal measure cause frustration to many players. Star Citizen is immensely detailed, and heading to a shop to purchase a fly suit, and then catching the train to the next hub, which in turn leads to the ship hangars, involved a lot of walking around and a lot of travelling. The environments are impressive, and it adds a huge amount to the sense of actually living in that world, but it does take time, and a lot of it at that. I've got to say though, that the cityscapes seen from viewing points, as well as during the train ride, were absolutely stunning. Equally, throughout the entire demo, the music was exceptional, very much a Blade Runner vibe going on, and yeah, something I really did enjoy. Flying to the mission location also took a fair amount of time, although Chris Roberts was keen to point out that this travel time was a consideration when implementing the one sixth scale planets. The planet of Hurston is 2,000 kilometers in diameter and uh, yeah, planet ratios in Star Citizen are scaled to 1 6th, which means Hurston is represented 6 times smaller than it would be in reality. For reference, the real world diameter of Earth is 12,700 oh, 12, kilometers, so that means Hurston is more or less equal in size to Earth, 
when using Star Citizen's scaling ratio. Chris Roberts did state that these planet sizes are larger than anyone else is doing, which is clearly incorrect, but maybe he was mistaken or maybe he misspoke at that point. But let's be honest here though, one sixth scale means they are actually smaller than Earth, they're actually smaller than their real world counterparts. But the point on travelling times is a valid one, and keeping the planets at a smaller scale will certainly help when travelling around. Planetary scale aside, the landscape is beautiful. The ground details are stunning, and this on the screen right now is just one of the six biomes on planet Hurston. These biomes include desert, savanna, acidic, strip mines, trash, and polluted coast. The mission they picked up was a fairly straightforward process of having to retrieve a hardware blade from the down satellite. Moving on foot here, CIG found to make a jump across a damaged section of the satellite and ultimately ended up dying and respawning back at their home base. For a player, this would be pretty bad due to those crazy travel times. Fortunately for CIG, they are being the developer and not a player, so they used a move to command to get to the correct location instantly. Now, after discovering the mission item was not the satellite and evading an ambush set by other players, CIG travelled to another location, this one being a bandit base. The bandit base showed off underground rooms, which I believe is a first for Star Citizen, and it showed off some gun combat with the game's newly implemented AI NPCs. Finally, after collecting the, uh, the hardware blade, they flew back to Lawville, and once again used the train system to travel to the location they needed to hand in the mission at. The entire mission took over an hour to complete, and the vast majority of that was actually travel time. But such is the nature of space games, especially when on the demands of real-world representation on all the first specific actions. Although that said, I've got to point out that space really wasn't a part of this demonstration, not in any form at all. Later, we got to see the ship showrooms and areas where players can purchase or rent ships. Now, this is a very big deal as it means players will, for the first time, be able to purchase ships using in-game credits. At this point, it's still very much an unknown of exactly how long it will take to earn enough money to buy a ship, however. Now, talking of new ships, CIG showed off the Kraken, which is an Avengers-style helicarrier in terms of functionality, and as with many ships, is an impressive looking beast. The other new ship was a Valkyrie, which was demonstrated to a custom mixed track of Flight of the Valkyries. The Valkyrie is already available in patch 3.3, which is now on the test servers, and this is the first time that a ship's gone directly into the game as soon as it's been announced and gone in in flight-ready form. And it's also available for purchase on the Robert Space Industries website. Depending on which variant you purchase, the price ranges from $396 up to $840. There's no prices on the Kraken right now, however there is an option to register your interest. So then, at the end of the demo, now it's all over, how has it been received? Well, by and large, I'd say the reception to CitizenCon this year has been lukewarm at best. Websites such as Eurogamer have picked up on Star Citizen and uh, CitizenCon, but haven't spent a huge amount of time going into much detail on what was presented, instead opting to offer a cursory look. Polygon, meanwhile, went into a little more detail, but ensured to focus on a number of the game's problems. Posts elsewhere across the internet on Reddit and various forums of course have been discussing it. Many people are actually liking what they've seen, but even still it hasn't seemed to gain a huge amount of traction. Now personally, I found the demo to be visually very impressive. The city of Lawville looks wonderful and will likely be a great place to explore, something I'll be looking forward to if and when I actually get to do that. However, gameplay still feels to be lacking. Sure, it's likely a nice, enjoyable, empty sandbox where you can get up to all sorts of activities and things with your friends. However, the core gameplay loops still seem to be lacking. The mission displayed, the mission on show, was very simple to fetch and retrieve quest, and if it had been absent, the surprise player created ambush there, it really would have had a whole lot to do. Well, at least there wouldn't have been a lot of use for the ships, which, in this demo at least, were used as a glorified taxi service. Now, don't get me wrong, that's not to say that the ships won't serve a valid function in the game, it's just that the function of the ships really wasn't the focus of this demo. Aside from a bit of gun strafing and the brilliant deploying of a ground vehicle whilst in flight, oh, and of course the travelling from A to B, 
the bulk of the gameplay loops were focused on first person and walking around actions rather than the large amounts of compelling gameplay from within your ship. And that, for me at least, left me feeling a little underwhelmed, especially after having been seen at the clear magnificence of the game world itself, which is an obvious labour of love. Now I know, I know, many people will of course be reminding me that this is an alpha and that all the true gameplay loops will be coming later on. And indeed, I'm sure people will be telling me that there are still a number of quality gameplay loops already in the game. But this video is about CitizenCon presentation and it really didn't show off any of those aspects. For me then, I'm of the opinion that Star Citizen is still showing a lot of promise. It is making clear progress in a number of areas. However, right now at least, Gameplay loops do not seem to be a massive part of that. Like many though, I'm very keen to see where this is all heading. So Citizen Con didn't end with the keynote presentation of course. Squadron 42, the single player game that CIG are also working on, made an appearance in the form of a game trailer. And this showed some spectacular cutscenes from the game and featured a very notable cast including Mark Hamill, Gary Oldman, Gillian Anderson, Mark Strong Henry Cavill and a number of others. Aside from a few second clip however, gameplay was not a part of this trailer. It's worth pointing out though that, based on this trailer at least, Squadron 42 has taken a massive leap in graphical quality since the last time we saw it. Chris Roberts also pointed out that with the completion of Object Container Streaming System, they have now completed and moved past all the technical challenges that they were facing with Squadron 42. However, the game is still absent of release date, and the same can also be said for Star Citizen. That said, patch updates for Star Citizen are still being released at a reasonable pace. Patch 3.3 is now available for players who have access to the test server, and Patch 3.4, whilst not having a release date just yet, however, will bring with it significant improvements to the game, including a new improved flight model, which is also demonstrated at CitizenCon. For now though, that brings me to the end of this video, but I will be back with some more videos very soon demonstrating the patch 3.3. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.